So I've got my little desert brush plant here. I'm gonna bring it. I'm stuffing it into the walls here to kind of thicken it up and make it less porous. I noticed if I didn't do wall work like this as I was building the bed on the other beds, there was more sort of drainage. The more material I stuffed in as I was building it, the stronger. You can always fortify it later, but it's you know easy to put it in now. So I kind of, it's not quite basket weaving, but I kind of, you know, take some and weave it in. A little bunch of it there you go and this one has the benefit of smelling nice i really like this plant bottle bush is good too but it doesn't have bottle bushes doesn't there's no leaves yet because we're still in winter this one is i don't know kind of an all year it can lose its leaves and grow back but it it doesn't last very long it's uh, hibernation is short So I'm going to get a couple more bundles of this and just fortify the wall. I did put uh, below this level was a lot of native grass, which we'll keep for at least a season or two. So it's held back, but the top here, so fill it in. I'll get a couple more loads and kind of touch it up and then do another layer in the garden, which I think right now is just like scraps of any kind that I can find. So I added some more leaf material, and uh, for this time I added mallow. There's even a couple flowering ones, like early flowering. Maybe they'll grow, but I added some mallow pieces. We have a uh, orange globe mallow here. That's a native plant, and it you know it doesn't have spikes, and it's nice. I, uh, it's also new. So I put it on the edge here, hoping that with a couple layers of dirt, it might start growing wild on the wall. I added a layer of just green stuff that was inedible uh, from around the garden that uh, I'm going to make thicker uh, before I put my next layer. I want to get enough green material that the birds can eat around on the same layer. So I put a new layer on the bed, and the layer, the material is at the bottom of the chicken bin this was the chicken bin we, we had a rooster in here for a while at the bottom of the bin was this really nitrogen rich composted material the mid part was you know sort of you know some kind of straw some kind of you know rotten food mixed in and a lot of chicken poop and then the top layer was kind of more dry and wood chippy but it's all came from the same bin let's flip it over and take a look at it and so we're not we we gained a couple inches maybe of material we're still not up to the lip yet and then I still might increase the lip on this one a little bit um, I'd like to start with a kind of mid shallow on the first year and then build it up the next couple of years but it's uh this one's doing good and I think I might get some you know compost on top of here and uh you know plant it right away just to get uh, some greens for the spring going maybe maybe a stand of sunflowers i'm not sure what i'm going to do here i haven't really thought it through yet but we're definitely going to have a couple different things and i might put a couple bricks to get to the middle because this looks like a deep one unless i have a big bush in the middle it's going to it's going to you're going to have to lean over the plants to get to anywhere you know it's it looks inconvenient but a little square in the middle with a couple bricks to step on might work it's about it's a good hmm, that's like 12 feet or something that's a 12 13 footer um yeah 14 maybe yeah, at the at the wide end and then it goes a little narrow here it's kind of a fishbowl thing here and this is maybe eight on this end but let's flip this over and take a look here Ooh. all right see that's the bottom the gunkiest darkest material um really really composted and that's what it looks like when the sludge pours out this is the good stuff but i do want it a little bit lower than the top of what we plant here i don't want it too strong you know the roots of the plant will get to it and go ah you know it's just too strong 
However, below here we do have a lot of woodsy material that we want to, you know, uh, uh, soak with nitrogen rich material. So there's a balance. So we're working on balance right now. I haven't decided yet what the next layer is going to be, but I'll, I'll pull something out of my hat. The uh, ice formed about an inch, maybe an inch in something last night on the little pond here we got our little artificial pond fish were doing okay there was one little baby that was frozen into the thing i don't think it was hardy enough but these guys seem like they're doing okay so i put another layer and it's ash i dumped a bunch of ash kind of in the middle it got a little wet so it, it kind of seeped in a bit um, then i threw the sort of pond water frozen top frozen of the pond water so any kind of time i clean this out i'm using the uh, material that I'm using the water and the you know stuff that they they do a lot of nitrates in their poop and things so the fish give really good water to sort of kickstart a garden bed so uh, this is the next layer it was it's ashy like this so I'm gonna put a little more I'll probably put some I had a big one here before but I'll put some more on this side and then I put some more on this side I gotta do another burn pile and then I'll get uh, more ash but this is an ash layer so I've added some more ash. I mixed it in a little bit, you can't tell. But uh, I put about three loads of ash. I might have burn another two burn piles or something and give ash. So now I'm gonna put dandelion, maybe a little fish water too. Looks like they need a little refresher on their water. So the dandelions, we have a pen down the hill that had pigs in it before. And uh, I, there's a bunch of dandelions growing down there. And it actually looks like a good place to build some garden beds. I, you know, haven't really thought of it like that, but I think I'm gonna take the animal stuff out of the way and build garden beds down there. The dandelion just kind of grew naturally. I think I might've introduced it to the area, but it grew naturally. And it's kind of interesting because we had uh, the coldest night of all time ever in this area. It was like 13 degrees the other night, but you know, our garden still looks fine. We still have a lot of stuff growing nothing really died that night you know i don't know it's uh I, I think you make the soils like uh look at all these bees too it's we had this really cold night just a couple nights ago and today it's going to be like 70 in the daytime night times probably 30s you know mid 30s something like that that's kind of a normal hey get out of here bee so the whole idea is i'm i'm gonna put a couple more layers on the bed today right now i'm gonna do some dandelion and then after that I think river sand again because uh, I got some good chunky material in here uh, river sand or maybe poop and river sand I gotta figure it out I want to go see what the poop stock looks like down the hill and if there's some good river sand I might also take some uh, good silt from uh, one of our dams down the hill so I covered it with a nice even layer of dandelion leaves and doing this by hand to make sure it's even when you're building beds like this certain layers you can use a rake but typically it's uh, especially on the lower lev levels there's branches and things that will tangle with a normal rake so you just got to do it by hand and I haven't really figured out my lanes here or how I'm gonna walk through it um, unless there's like a big tree at the center that I don't need to approach closely, I want, I, I'm gonna have to figure out what I do with the access because it's, it's too wide and deep and whatnot to get to the middle of it. Um, I, you know, so I still haven't decided what I'm putting here. I'm thinking about some uh, wine grapes just to test them out, like probably if it's a couple varieties of wine grapes in here or something else like that, or it might just go with herbs or, you know, I, I'm not sure yet. So until I have the plan of what I'm doing with it, I'm just building it. A um, couple more layers. I'm gonna go work on the next material. So I added a layer, pretty thin layer of alfalfa. Um, it might uh, need a little thicker, like especially in the middle there, it's kind of thin. So I wanna put a little bit more, but uh, next is gonna be local sand and silt. So here's the garden bed after a layer of snow and cold. And it'll, you know, in its own way, help the bed become more mature. 
so for this layer i'm adding you know i would call it um mulched pigweed is what i'm going to call it because i took a tractor and scraped pigweed up with a real thin layer of dirt and it's in an area that's uh sort of uh, de decomposed granite pours into like this little valley so it's um pigweed ma mixed with dirt and silt basically but it is local dirt if you'll notice there's some grains in there you see that that's some granite some silt some you know river rock like it's all kind of mixed up not quite loamy but pretty 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 flaky does have a high clay content but it's better than clay and so instead of river rock alone i was down there last night and i said oh, you know i might as well take some of this stuff and and i created it basically i was building soil on purpose and so i scraped all this stuff into a big pile and what it looks like when it's laying there is it looks like this kind of stuff intermixed with the dirt. And so it's like half composted, real good stuff for a Hugo culture bed. So this is exactly what I wanted. It's going to kickstart the compost of this last layer, which is, while it's pretty thin, it was a, it was a layer of alfalfa. And so um, I don't know. You know, um, if you guys know this, but alfalfa does have some growth promoter in it. I forgot what it's called, but it's some kind of um, uh, compound inside the alfalfa that promotes growth of other plants. Besides just nitrogen, it has like a growth stimulator. It's amazing. So this layer is going to help compost the alfalfa and give up all its good stuff. And uh, which it does pretty rapidly. Alfalfa is a really rapid natural fertilizer. You can buy it in meal. You can grow it yourself. You can, you know, but whatever it is, it's real helpful for the plants. Now we're going to see right here, this lip is getting real close to even from the, the walkway here. So it's only maybe about three or four inches down from here, which means I have to do some more architecture either put a log right here to retain which i have to do anyway but you know it depends on do i build it into the bed right now as architecture or do i do it later it's pretty windy today but it's a nice you know it's not we got a lot of rain it's it's not too cold it's just windy. so i added some local dirt with uh, mixed with sort of silt and river sand. It's all kind of mixed together. And the local stuff was augmented by some weeds and such. So it's really kind of rich, biologically rich. I might add a little bit more thickness to it, but this was one load of the same kind of material. Typically, I'll, I'll why not put something else and then maybe more of this, that kind of thing, so I can get more layers. But it's a thin layer of better quality local dirt that's been mulched with hay. So this is a perlite, kind of a finer grain, kind of middle, maybe mid coarse, mid fine. So I spread some out. What I'm going to do is put a little bit more of this stuff, this dirt, and kind of break it in with the perlite. So I put the dirt down that was in these buckets it's not very much not a whole load or anything just a couple like you know quarter buckets or so so i put a thin layer over and i kind of mixed it up with the like raking it a little bit but lightly raking i don't know i flipped the rake over and i kind of grade it into it and then i flipped the rake back to the normal direction and kind of work it in but it could be better ultimately i think Perlite's best, not as a layer in, say, lasagna guarding, but like amongst the thicker dirt. And so this is local soil that came from a pile that I, I tractored a pile of local uh, grass. And uh, I basically harvested pigweed that grows out here like a weed and local grass mixed with kind of clay uh not quite river sand but sort of thickish clay mixed with some rocks or whatever runs across in the rains 
it's kind of an area that used to be a river, but I think it was dammed up by the previous residents. So it kind of has, it collects silt basically, which is pretty heavy clay. But if you look at this, it's not that bad. You mix it with some perlite, it's darn right loamy. Now I'm doing two things here that I don't usually do or don't do as much is I'm mixing perlite in with the main bed and I'm, you know, so it's an outside resource. You have to purchase it. It's not super expensive or anything, but you know, it's something you have to go out and buy. Um, you could do it without it, and the, the, the soil would turn out to be light, light and flaky anyway. But there's that, and then uh, I put more native soil in here, like the clay stuff, the kind of silt and clay stuff than I usually do. I do a thin layer usually, but I, you know, there's a couple inches here at the top. I wouldn't really consider this the best topsoil, so I do need some high organic material like worm castings or something, or even... I don't want to go with one of those chemical companies, but some kind of um, organic topsoil or compost or something right on top. And then we'll be almost ready to go. Because I've used a lot of native dirt near the surface though, it's going to be a problem with weeds. Probably we'll get some pigweeds popping up and some other stuff, but I, I just pull those so it's okay. I use them for sort of green fertilizer. So if you'll notice, it's not a conclusion or anything, but we're getting up to the lip. I just noticed this today, we're almost at the lip. So I either have to build upward with, you know, my bed uh, retainer here, whatever you call it, or I gotta put a thin top layer and call it a day and start planting. I didn't realize I was that ready to plant, but I guess I am. The slope is a little bit, uh, kind of, I want to make a bowl right here so the rain will come down the river and over this edge into sort of the deeper bowl here. It collects with all the wood under the ground and all the materials. And then hopefully, if there's excess, it'll trickle out through here. Not really sure. Every bed is different. And this is right in the middle of the stream, just like this bed. So it's kind of, this was a newer one. I just did this last season. It's mostly just native grass piled up in a dammed up area in the main river. So I don't know, we'll see what's gonna happen. If we get some heavy rains this summer, it might challenge my system, but we'll see. We'll see what we can do. The bigger the plants, I think, the more probably value you'd get like with safety and such. But, you know, I'll do a mixture like always. Uh, so after I did a little bit of perlite, I mixed it in uh, to the native silt or whatever you call that stuff and what we have now is another layer of alfalfa so I went alfalfa some river sand and silt and some kind of thicker dirt with a uh, composted vegetable material in it and then another layer of alfalfa so this is early April we have uh, completed the bed at least this first incarnation and we've planted it and it has some you know some babies coming up we also put uh, a couple trees in there this was the tree that was existing already it's a it's a apple i believe and we put a pomegranate here it's hard to see until i get it it's kind of skinny it was in a you know not a good place before so i moved it where it would get more sun and and it would just be happier in this bed this next one is a Santa Rosa plum. Lovely. It's got a little tattered uh, recently. It got tattered by the wind yesterday. It was real bad wind and it just looks, I don't know, tattered. Um, that kind of thing. I mean, we got, we, we get real, real strong winds here. So, uh, but it's, it's doing good. Um, and the bed itself is doing, doing okay. Here's some little stuff popping up. It's hard to see the little babies, but I have to come out here every morning. Oh, here's some more. Here's a bunch more. So we planted things like collard greens, lettuce, different various, you know, uh, and uh, definitely the bed will probably need to be replanted a couple times, but um, you know, we're gonna get it up and going with some veggies real soon here. So I put, I had some extra tomatoes, that I spread around and just, you know, some food scraps, I just kind of randomly throw it around. Um, when uh, we had some volunteers coming and helping us uh, a couple weeks ago, and we were, we, we 
raked it, mixed it in again a little more, added a little more organic material and uh, prepared it for planting. And then we planted and, you know, there's quite a bit popping up all over. It's hard to see from far away, but there's little green things in there. You see those? Uh, also, I moved, there was an uh, artichoke plant that was basically dying and uh, it made a tremendous comeback in the last couple of weeks. I planted it in the corner there, you can see. And I might plant one more tree over in that corner because I, I kind of crowd trees. I'm not sure if that's, you know, I, I crowd everything actually. And I'm not sure if it's, you know, this, for example, this tree right here was crowded, this pomegranate, and it didn't do so well. So, it, cause it was overgrown with other stuff. So I'm beginning another bed, lower bed below. So this is again, just the beginning. There's, there's some materials, some sticks, and uh, there's gonna be another sort of walkway going here. I don't know if I'll plant it, but it'll be a walkway to get around the beds. And this one here will probably be not as tall as that uh, bed, but something, and we can get it filled up and plant some lettuce or greens or some other shallow root, shallow root items. In conclusion, I just wanted to show a fully developed Hugo Culture Terrace bed. This one is about the same depth, although it doesn't reside in the river like the other one. This one is to the sides of the river and the water will, you know, when it's raining does go through the channel here. Uh, this bed though, is, it's a couple years going. There's my, there's my fish like mobile pond up there. Maybe I'll go say hi to the fish in a second. But uh, basically this bed is developed. It's deep, it's rich biologically, and it is a what I would consider a mature Hugo culture bed. It's gone uh, maybe a couple seasons, two, two and a half seasons now. I did add to it a couple years ago, but it's, it's basically rich and fertile. And as you can see, this is early April and a little bit before expected, all the mint has sprouted with a vigor. It's pretty, uh, it's a pretty good bed. And so this is what you're expecting or what you can expect from building a Hugo culture bed like I showed in the previous videos. Thank you for watching.